started the recording is yeah okay recording is on so let's uh, let's pray and um, as we pray maybe we can pray in line with what we see in Ephesians chapter 1 okay Ephesians chapter 1 and verse um, it is a, one of the prayers that Paul prayed for the Ephesian church right for the believers in Ephesus so this is what he what we see okay Ephesians chapter 1 okay you can Turn your Bible to Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, and verses um, 16 onwards. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Okay, and, this, and he goes on to explain, um, this is what he prays. What does he pray? He says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places. So, you know, several things that Paul is actually praying for the uh, efficient church. You no, know? so he, he's just saying that this is what I'm praying that um, the Lord may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. So that's something that we can pray, Lord, um, Lord. Even as You've given me the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> may I have wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of You. Right. Secondly. Uh, may my eyes, the eyes of my understanding, may be enlightened that I may know what is the hope of your calling for me. Right? What is the hope of your calling for me? What is your calling for me? And um, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? Right? And thirdly, what is the exceeding greatness of your power? Lord, I want to know about your power. What is the greatness of your power towards me who believes in you? Right? So let's pray. We can just pray these things. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for, uh, for your presence in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your written word, the revealed word, God, the quickened word. Master, we thank you, Lord. Even as we pray today, Lord, we, we pray for the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of you. Lord, may our eyes be open, the eyes of our understanding be open. May we know what is the hope of your calling for each one of us, O oh God. Yes, Lord. I just pray that, um, Lord, the sense of the call, the hope of the call, the, the scope of the call, oh God, everything, oh God, Lord, I pr Lord, we pray that you would make it known. And Lord, may we also know the, the power, oh God, the, you, the greatness of your power, the greatness of that Holy Spirit power towards us who believe in you. Lord, may we know that, oh Father God, and, um, uh, and may we experience that in our spirits, in our inner man, even today. Come, Holy Spirit, lead us, Lord. We need you. We are we are dependent on you, O oh God. We lean on you today, Lord, for all these and more. And for you have said that you will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think or imagine. So we, we bless your name. We give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Right. So we have been looking at um, the work of the Holy Spirit. That's chapter 8, right? The work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a uh, believer. And we saw how the Holy Spirit is the one who causes the, the, uh, the, the person who puts his faith in Jesus, her, her faith in Jesus, to be born again, right? To causes the regeneration. So it's, it's very, very... Um, uh, it's important or it's it's something that we need to really understand the whole value of it because um, here's something that has happened because of the work of the Holy Spirit. Now our spirit was dead to God. Okay, So the Bible says that our spirit was dead to God in the sense that our spirit was not responding to God. Right? We were dead to Him. We were alive to sin. We were dead to God. Right? For, for us being such people, for such a person, the Holy Spirit, because we responded, right? In our response, 
of faith. We trusted in him and we responded saying, yes, uh, I believe in Jesus. The Holy Spirit came and did a work of regeneration. Regeneration. Okay, that's what we saw that we are born again by the Holy Spirit. right? And our spirit man, which was dead to God, now came alive. Right? Now we are... So that is why we have the assurance of the Spirit where we can say, we can call, you know, uh, our Lord, Lord and Savior, because we can say, Abba Father, right? We can pray, Heavenly Father. We have that assurance that we are His children, okay? So, so that's something which is invaluable, something that is very, very precious, okay? Then we also saw that uh, the Holy Spirit helps, helps the believer in everyday life, how to walk in holiness, to walk in sanctification, to put to death the things of the flesh, right? So that we can walk in continued or progressive uh, holiness and sanctification, right? So we saw that. And we also saw that we are temples. I think that's where we stopped last class. We saw that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, that we are a dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Okay, So when we say temples of the Holy Spirit, we are saying that uh, we are his dwelling place collectively as well as individually. Okay, collectively as well as individually. So, what do we mean by that? Now, if you look at first 1 Corinthians 3, right? 1 Corinthians 3. Okay, can somebody read 1 Corinthians chapter 3? And uh, I think it's, yeah, verse 16, verses 16 and 17. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 16 and 17. Can someone read? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Okay, that's 17. The verse before that, 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Yeah. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Yeah, so that's... Um... 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16 and 17. So the question here is, is, is the Lord, I mean, is uh, uh, Paul writing, you know, is he writing to one person or is he writing to a group? Obviously, he's writing to the, the, the group of believers who are there at Con Corinth. Okay? So when he's addressing them here, he's saying that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? You, collectively, you believers, right? you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay. And he's saying that, um, uh, you know, in verse 16, he says, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Which means collectively, as a group, the Spirit of God is dwelling and abiding and doing wonderful things collectively as a group. Verse 17 says that, do you not know that um, if anyone defiles the temple, which means if anyone, you know, what does defile mean? desecrate, make dirty, right, break off, do such things. If anyone defiles the temple of God, you know, it says that the temple of God is holy, whose temple you are, God will actually take it very seriously. That person will be destroyed. So he's talking about how, uh, if you read the chapter from chapter 3, uh, verse 1 onwards, he's talking about how division, envy, quarreling, fighting, you know, all that, he says, you know, you, you people are carnal, meaning fleshly, right? You're fighting among yourself. You're like little children, right? Now, he's saying that, you know, that is not correct. And so he's saying, how can the body be defiled when there is envy, when there is strife, when there is fighting, when there's quarreling? Okay? So he's saying, you know, God takes it very seriously if such things are happening in the body because you are the temple of God, okay? And collectively, you actually host... The presence of God. Okay, so that's something that we see as believers, collectively, uh, you know, as a group, as a body, we host the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit abides and dwells and does certain things among us. Maybe people are called, you know, uh, for a particular purpose, right? Maybe part of a local church. Believers, maybe a team, you know, called for a particular purpose. The Holy Spirit dwells. The Holy Spirit abides. Okay, so what will what will actually defile that the dwelling place? It is all these things that he writes here, right? He writes in, um, let's say, uh, if you look at verse three, 
chapter 3, verse 3, he says, You are still carnal, for where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Okay, and he says, This is this is not correct, right? So so we see that the Holy Spirit dwells among us as a as a body, like collectively. Then the next next thing that we see is if you turn to chapter 6. Okay, same 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And you look at the last uh, two verses. Okay, chapter 6, last two verses. Okay, so here he says, Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Okay? Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Okay, so here he's saying, you know, do you not know that you are a temple of the Holy Spirit? So here he's talking about individuals. Okay, every person. He's not talking about people collectively. He's saying, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Your body, in fact, he, that's what he says, right? Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Okay, so he says that, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, right? So he's saying in verse 20 that you belong to God. Right? Your body belongs to God. Your spirit belongs to God. You, spirit, soul, and body, you belong to God. Why? Because you were bought at a price. Right? So we belong. So because we belong to God, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. Right? We are the... Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, right? So, so that's the understanding that we should have as believers, that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So just, you know, just think about this, right? Suppose you go and buy something from a shop, okay? Let's go, let's say I go and buy this shirt from a shop and I, you know, I paid whatever money I've, I've, I've bought it, I've taken it home, and I'm wearing it. Now you tell me, you know, can the shopkeeper come to me and say, I know you bought it, but every Wednesday and Thursday, you know, I will come and put something in your pocket, shirt pocket. Okay? Because Wednesday and Thursday, that shirt pocket belongs to me. Right? And you have to carry it. So he'll come and put some paper, some trash, something. And he's saying, you have to carry it with you in your pocket because Wednesday and Thursday, that shirt belongs to me. You know, what will you, what will you feel? You'll be angry. You'll be upset. You'll say, no, no chance. I paid. You told me this is the price. I paid the price. I bought it. The shirt belongs to me. Okay. So same way, the Lord is saying, you were... You and I, you were bought at a price. And that price was that great sacrifice on the cross, the blood of Jesus. So we belong to... Belong to who? We belong to Jesus. We belong to God. So, Satan or any other works of the enemy cannot come and say, this part of you belongs to me. Right? Your thoughts belong to me. Or your words belong to me. Or, you know, this in this area, this behavior that belongs to me. Satan cannot say that. Why? Because we were bought completely. See, as absurd as that sh shopkeeper coming and putting certain things and you accepting it. You know, we will never accept it, right? If a shirt, sh shopkeeper comes and says, this shirt belongs to me. Now I need to put, you know, on these days, I need to put this. Or at this time, I need to put some stuff in your shirt. We will never accept that. Yet, we accept the lies of the enemy when the enemy says, you know, this kind of behavior, you know, uh, it, it's part of your life. We know it's not from God. Or, you know, these kind of thoughts, these kind of imaginations, you know, it is part of you. We know it's not from God. And we know that we uh, belong to him. But yet we accept that. Right? We accept that, which is absurd, right? We should not, right? Because we belong to Jesus.
we belong to him because we've been purchased by him and that is why god says you know your body is the temple of the holy spirit you know, he dwells he stays he abides in you and we are to he says your life is not your own okay your life is not your own but it belongs to god completely so the best way to you know do is to live life on his terms and not on our, our own terms right okay let's move on so temples of the uh, temples of um, uh, holy spirit that is who we are collectively and um, and also um, uh, individually right okay let's move to second corinthians chapter 3 okay so we are, what are we studying we are looking at the works of the holy spirit in a believer's life okay how does the holy spirit um, what does the Holy Spirit do in a believer's life, right? Second Corinthians 3 and verse 18. Okay, it says, But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into this uh, same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, let's read that again. If we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what is what is the, what is the Lord telling us here? You know, we uh, with unveiled face, meaning, uh, you know, the previous verses talk about how, you know, there was a covering. You know, typically talking about the Jews, there was a covering on their face whenever they read the law because they could not understand that it was actually about Jesus, right? But when we come to Jesus, that that veil is taken away, okay? And literally, it happened when when the Lord died on the cross that the veil in the temple, you know, the veil in the temple, uh, there was a screen in the temple which was preventing people from going into the Holy of Holies, that veil was torn. Yes? You remember that? That veil was torn completely. And from, you know, from top to bottom, it was, it was torn. Symbolically signifying that now we have access to the Holy of Holies. Right? Nothing preventing us. So here it's saying with unveiled face, right? We are born again. We, the unveiled face... As we behold the glory of God. Okay, Shani has a question. Go ahead, Shani. I'm sorry, where are you at in the notes? Um, notes, we're looking at chapter 8. Is it page 18? Chapter 8 and, um, yeah, the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. And we are looking at, um, the you know, that, that section on holiness and sanctification, how okay, the Holy Spirit you. helps. Yeah, and we are looking at the last point, which is uh, how He changes us into Christ likeness. Oh, okay, maybe you. I'll just share the notes here. Yes, one second. Um, just a minute. Um, Okay, there you go. Okay, so there's a question. Um, Satan is a defeated foe. Uh, we all know that. But still, why do believers remain defeated in uh, their spiritual lives? Yeah. So um, so Satan, Satan's ploys are very, um, you know, um, yeah, very, very simple. Uh, he's called the father of lies, so he uses um, lies. He's, um, you know, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. 
he we know that he's called the tempter he's the deceiver so lies deception temptations these are the works of um, the enemy now um, the believer is it's possible for the believer to be either lied to to be deceived to be tempted okay so now the believer has the authority to say no the believer has the right to say no but it, being um, you know one who can actually choose if i choose to accept the lies if i choose to be deceived um, and if i choose to be tempted if i make a choice to be tempted and fall you know pray to temptation then um, you know then uh, we we the believer lives a much uh, like a substandard life um, where one is you know not living a life of victory so that's the only that's the thing so the minute the believer rises up in within in the authority that the believer has been given you know with the authority um, and uh, and with all the resources that the lord has given us with the word of god being our confession uh, having the understanding of the what he has actually achieved for us on the cross then we will begin to walk in victory like that's why you know many times like paul also says you know brethren i do not want you to be ignorant i don't want you to be ignorant because ignorance is something that does not allow us to walk in victory we know all that we all know that common saying ignorance is bliss and <laughs> which means that if i don't know it i don't have to you know be troubled about it i'm fine but actually ignorance can keep us trapped because we don't know our rights we don't know our place we don't know our authority and we end up walking um, a defeated life thinking okay you know that's all this is, this is how i must live our life as a believer but actually god has called us to a victorious life right okay right so so what, what is uh, what do we see here verse 18 we see that um, with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord we are being you know that word we are being transformed right there's a drastic change that's happening you know as we behold the glory of the lord right uh, and the beholding the glory of the lord you know with unveiled face which means that we are actually positioned as believers to to go into the presence of god to have encounter with god either you know through his word or through his spirit and uh, intentionally we can walk in or sovereignly he can draw us you know to that place of encounter so as we behold or uh, which means to see uh, to keep on seeing to see with the intention to learn to see with an intention to observe and receive when we behold the glory of the lord what is happening there is drastic change okay and it's interesting to see what kind of change we are transformed into what into the same image that we are beholding and what is that image that's the glory of the lord like that's the lord himself so that transformation happens we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord which means the holy spirit enables leads us into this process of transformation which is there for every believer right we might be saying you know i'm 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 you know i need a lot of change right i need transformation in these areas i need change i'm i'm you know frustrated right i feel helpless i feel frustrated uh, i'm i i want change in these areas yes change is available and it's by the holy spirit for the believer we're not talking about unbelievers right we're talking about believers for the believer there is transformation transformation into the same image right so what paul is saying here is that we are being transformed to be like christ christ likeness to be like jesus right we're not transformed to be like that pastor or to be like that evangelist or to be like that man or woman of god which is great right but we're not transformed the holy spirit doesn't transform transform us into any of that the holy spirit actually transforms us to be like jesus so it says we are being transformed into that same image by the holy spirit right so that's something that's available for us so if you're saying you know i i i want change you know i i feel that i'm stuck i want change i want just not just small change but drastic change yes 
the holy spirit will take us the holy spirit will change us all those areas of weaknesses or limitations the holy spirit will change it to be like jesus that area that we are struggling the holy spirit will change but are we willing to behold the glory of god and are we willing to be led by the holy spirit and holy spirit will bring change and um, we will see that uh, the victory right as we as we walk right okay so let's look at um, the next next part which is walking in the spirit walking as led by the spirit walking as filled by the spirit of god okay, so we, i think we looked at that um, uh, verse romans chapter 5 and verse 5 in our last class right you remember that romans 5 verse 5 it says that um, the love of god has been poured out into our hearts by the holy spirit Hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. So again, just to remind us, what is being poured into our hearts? It's the love of God. Okay? Love that belongs to God. The God kind of love, which is not a deficient love, but it's an overcoming, overpowering love right uh, we're talking about agape here okay there are different words that describe love right filio or storge eros agape all these greek words uh, you know in in the language it's in english, english language it's translated as love but you know this particular love that we're talking about is a god kind of love unconditional love right which we know as agape so here it says that the agape of God, the love of God, has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has brought that capacity in our hearts. Okay. So the Holy Spirit has brought that ability to love like God loves. Okay. So the thing is, is the previous verse that we saw, we need to be transformed more and more to be like Him in order to express that love that is that we already have in our hearts by the holy spirit right because if i'm not transformed if my thoughts are not transformed if my speech is not transformed then this love which is there on the inside will not be expressed will not be will not find you know uh, what do you call it expression right because it will get blocked by my own thoughts let's say the Holy Spirit says, okay, you know, you need to love that person. I know that the person is, uh, you know, doing all kinds of things and, uh, you know, is, acts like your enemy, but you need to love. But it is immediately, it is, you know, short-circuited by my own thoughts, right? It says, no chance. That guy does not deserve kind words. That guy does not deserve kind action. Immediately, your thoughts cancel out the thoughts of God right? because there is no that is not transformation but when the Holy Spirit leads us in transformation and one of the ways transformation happens is by the renewing of our minds renewing of our thoughts right when it happens then we see transformation in our behavior transformation in our speech transformation in our thoughts in our actions everywhere right so we see that the love of god has been poured out into our hearts so the holy spirit helps us to walk in love so walk in love simply means to to have a lifestyle of that kind of love for others okay okay so walking in the spirit let's look at the same chapter verse 16. okay um uh, we're going to, sorry, not the same chapter. We're going to look at Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5 and verse 16. Um, this is also something that we saw last class. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. So walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill. And it goes on to talk about what are the works of the flesh and what is the fruit of the spirit.
Okay. Uh, my screen went blank for a minute. Okay. It's fine. Okay. OK, so um, right. So we see that um, you know, when we walk in the spirit, this privilege of being led by the Holy Spirit is there for every believer. OK, so this privilege is there for all of us. Okay. Um, can you? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me, please? Okay. I can hear you. You can. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Um. There's some technical issues. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so as we walk in the spirit, uh, this privilege of being led by the spirit of God, prompted, instructed by the spirit of God, is is for every believer. Okay. So, so if it's if something like that is available for every believer, what is it that's stopping us from, you know, making use? What is it that's stopping us? If this privilege to be led by the Holy Spirit, if this privilege to, you know, to, to be led by the Holy Spirit in such a way that we can put to death the things of the flesh, you know, that's what we say here. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Okay? So the lust of the flesh is, leads to death. The lust of the flesh separates us from God. Okay, it's it's enmity be between us and God. So it just takes us away from all that God has for us. Good plans, good things, maybe a good destiny, and you know, all that God has for us. The works of the flesh either delays it, postpones it, or takes us away from it. Right? Since we have this privilege as believers to walk in the spirit, we need to make use of it. Right, you need to say oh, this is wonderful, right? Not everybody has this, but I can walk in the spirit, being led by the spirit of God, right? So we, I need to, we need to intentionally say, God, I want to walk as led by you, as prompted by you, as instructed by you, so that I can, I cannot fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Okay, so our thinking and everything changes, our behavior, everything. There is transformation again in our lives. So the Holy Spirit has come to help us. The Holy Spirit has come. You know, that's what the Lord Jesus said, right? He will guide us into all truth, the spirit of truth. He will guide us into all truth, right? He will, he, he's come and the, the Lord said he's the helper, the paracletos. So, so if somebody is there to help, why are we not taking that help in order to? put to death the things of the body, right? OK. And uh, Ephesians 5 talks about the fact that we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now we can say, yes, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, and the Holy Spirit has baptized me. But we see multiple times that people are filled in the Holy Spirit after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts, we see that. Ephesians 5, verse 18. Uh, Paul's, uh, Paul writes to the, again, the efficient believers, and he says, And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Okay, Being filled with the Spirit, which means that um, um, this, this whole experience of being filled with the Spirit is there for every believer again. Right? To be filled with the Spirit, and it says there is an overflow. When we are filled with the Spirit, there's an overflow. Verse 19, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, and so on. 
Okay, this being filled with the Spirit really inspires us. This brings out certain things. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Okay, so every day we can say, "Holy Spirit, fill me." Okay, Holy Spirit, fill me, and um, we can walk in the reality of that, which is available for uh, each one of us. Okay, we we saw the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, the sec the, the lastly, in this section, we see that um, the Holy Spirit gives us liberty, <clears throat> freedom. Yeah, the Holy Spirit does not lead us into bondage. Right? Now, if you if you look at um, um, you know, uh, the the prophet the prophecy the prophetic uh, verse in Isaiah sixty one and the Lord reading that uh, in the synagogue. Okay, let's uh, let's turn to. Um, just one second. Let's turn to Book of Luke. Okay, let's turn to Luke chapter four and verses eighteen and nineteen. Okay, this is the Lord reading Isaiah sixty-one um, in the synagogue. Right. So it says, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim." Liberty to the captives. Like right? proclaim what is liberty? Freedom. Right? To the captives, to those who are held captive. To be what does it mean to be held captive? Stronghold, bondage. You know, it, it means to be held a prisoner against your will. Right? That, that, is, that is what it means to be held captive, to be a prisoner. Actually, you want to be free, right? You want to go out and you want to run around, and uh, but you are held captive. You are held a prisoner against your desire, against your will, right? So it says here, to proclaim liberty to the captives and to set a recovery of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Okay. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, those who are held captive, freedom. Okay. And if you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, you know, we, we read the verse after that um, just a little while ago, how we are transformed into glory, uh, into the same image, right? Verse 17 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty okay so if you read Luke chapter 4 you know those two verses the Lord Jesus is anointed by the Holy Spirit to bring liberty to bring something which which is a characteristic of the Holy Spirit right? where the Spirit of the Lord is there is freedom where immediately there is freedom he brings freedom right so here we see that uh, the Holy Spirit where he is there is freedom right? so which means there is that setting open of prison doors. There is the breaking of chains or bondages that hold us back. Okay, so that the Holy Spirit brings that into our lives. Okay. So um, in our own lives, you know, we, we could say, okay, I'm free, but then maybe there are areas in our lives which are like prisons. Right? Then you might say, okay, what do you mean? You know, I'm I'm a free person, I can do what I want, but then the fact is that there could be certain areas which are like prisons for us. Like maybe it's a prison of anger. Maybe it's a prison of regret. Right? We are locked in that prison, regretting, oh, why did I do that you know, five years ago, six years ago? Or why did I not do that? I should have studied. I should have done that. I should have done that. I should have. I could have so many opportunities. You know, that prison of regret right so what what does the prison do it does not help us to go out the prison is locked because of this regret you know it causes maybe a sense of low value okay maybe there are uh, for example you know maybe there are if you you know you go into a room and there are people there and maybe there are people who are highly successful highly skilled talented and in their presence 
you feel low value there's no confidence oh wow such a you know, such a great person they are so you know educated and i'm not or uh, you know uh, they are so skilled i'm not and so you you behave differently you're not talking right you are in fear so what is that that's a prison it's a prison of regret there's a prison of fear right which is not allowing us to be free the way god has created us to be to be confident right so we have all those prisons that there could be these prisons or strongholds that that is keeping us from living life the way jesus wants us to live right from you know from being people who are influencing being salt and light you know? so we are trapped we feel trapped okay so here we see that where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty which means that there is freedom for every believer because that's what the anointing of the holy spirit does the lord says he has anointed me to set at liberty those who are held captive to set at liberty those who are oppressed so whether there's oppression and you know captivity the holy spirit comes to set free open those doors break those chains okay and that can be very liberating for us as believers when we experience this ministry of the holy spirit and that's again available for each one of us he gives us liberty okay um i think we have yeah we have a few more minutes okay the next thing that we see is that the holy spirit also leads us in um in the ministry of revelation okay so what do, what does it mean what do, what do we call as the revelatory work of the holy spirit okay, what is your understanding of it the holy spirit reveals the holy spirit brings revelation what do we mean by that sorry he prophecy yes. pastor uh, uh, prophecy yeah okay um anyone else i think i see a hand go up um knowledge and understanding uh, i'm sorry uh, once again please Shall i said i said knowledge and understanding knowledge and understanding you know that verse that we read in ephesians may the lord where paul prays may the lord give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him right the spirit of wisdom and revelation the holy that is one of the attributes of the holy spirit the holy spirit reveals okay so it's like if you have a curtain let's say just pretend there's a curtain behind or a curtain in front of me okay so you can't see what's behind the curtain but you know there is someone behind standing behind the curtain because we can hear him but we can't see him the holy spirit comes and opens the curtain and says see see for yourself okay that is revelation right he opens our understanding he opens our eyes to see yeah. what the truth is right something that is hidden maybe from our view he opens and says okay this is what it gives us clarity gives gives us understanding okay okay so we'll take a break and then we'll come back